Uh, hi, I'm Joe. I'm studying maths at Worcester College first year, and I got 100% on the MAT. Woohoo! <laughs> Hello, so I'm GCSE Potential, and we're with a lovely Joe today. Thank you so much. Um, he got 100% on the map, which is absolutely ridiculous. I think the average for the offer holder, it's 0 to 100. I think the average is about 75-ish. Yeah, that's not right. Yeah. yeah, I think 100. I don't know many people that's all got 100%. Yeah, no, there is not many of us. Not many, equally <laughs> probably zero. Um, so to begin with, talk to us a little bit about your journey into maths, and then you could talk a little bit specifically about the MAT, some specific resources, etc. But to begin with, like, let's talk about maths. I mean, so maths, because it's such like a core subject it's something that you can get into at a very young age yeah. so like since like year one since i learned what multiplication was like i'm getting comments home from my teachers saying oh at least joe knows his 12 times tables <laughs> like I've, I've been obsessed with maths for years and like the love of it just keeps growing as you go from primary school to secondary school you go do your gcse's up to a level with maths further maths and now at uni, it's getting more and more interesting. But ma the f I love maths. I love the idea that you can just <laughs> write down a proof of something and just look at it, and it's <laughs> indisputable. Yeah. It's beautiful. Clearly not a humanities student with that lack of subjectivity. But yeah, great, so he loves maths. <laughs> Why did he choose the Oxford maths course? And then based on that, we could start to talk about the math. I knew I wanted to go to Oxbridge just because I felt like they had the best maths courses in the country. <laughs> I wanted the best teaching as possible. Um, Oxford over Cambridge, I just preferred the Oxford maths course. Like I did my research on both Oxford and Cambridge and like how they're taught and even who's teaching them. I searched up some of the tutors and I just preferred how Oxford maths was taught and like the topics they did. Um, and in addition, like the MAT, I felt was easier than STEP. Which just, it, it just may, may be a bit easier, but also like I like the fact MET is done at the beginning of year 13, which means it's easier to be more impressive on the MET than STEP, because if you do like a bit of extra reading, a bit of looking ahead into your course, uh, when it comes time to the MET, then you look more impressive because you know two yeah. years of content, but when you're doing STEP, everyone knows the same A-levels, yeah. so you can't like separate yourself from the crowd as yeah. well as an MET. Although step is incredibly hard. Yeah. So if you do well on step, you're pretty much set. But <laughs> Oxford MAT, I thought was nicer. I've, of course did both because <laughs> why wouldn't you obviously? Yeah. But yeah, no, the MAT was the choice for me. Thank you very much. So clearly you've thought through that very logically as a mathematician would. <laughs> um, so to begin with sort of how did you approach it? So when did you start preparing for the MAT? What sort of resources did you use? Did you create a timeline? Did you create a schedule? How was your approach or what was your approach? So I started like looking at the MIT at the beginning of year 12. Okay. So that's when I sort of uh, settled that I wanted to go to Oxford. This is what I want to do. Uh, this is what my admissions process is going to be. So then I started doing research on the MIT and I started revising for it as soon as possible. Yeah. So because the MIT like focuses on your AS level maths, I just went over each topic as we went along and then I'd find MIT questions specifically on those topics, yeah. uh, which you can do by looking like on the MAT website, they have loads of past papers. So it's easy to find questions like that are applicable to you at the time. Because obviously you don't do things like differentiation and integration until later in the year. So it'd be impossible to do a whole paper immediately because yeah. you just haven't been taught the right material. A lot of like other places you can get material is just by learning like how to answer a maths question. So if you do things like maths challenges, yeah like the senior maths challenge, the kangaroo, the Olympiads. It's good at teaching you how to approach a maths question yeah. in a way like the MAT asks them. In A-level, it's really just memorizing a process yeah, and definitely. you just repeat the process and you get the marks and you move on, which is great if you, do, <laughs> if you don't want to do a maths degree. Really? Get, 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 get your like A, A star, perfect. Yeah. But if you want to do a maths degree, you need to know exactly what you're writing at every yeah. single point. You need to understand why you're doing what you're doing. And the MAT is good at testing whether you know what you're doing. Yeah. So you can't just get away with uh, memorizing a process because it's not like that at the MAT, especially with like the multiple choice questions and the long, the long answer questions because you get multiple parts yeah. that are going to drill into if you know exactly what you're doing. Yeah. So it's important to get the revision in as soon as possible. As soon as you learn a topic, you need to know why are we doing these steps when we answer a question about this topic? Yeah. Why are we learning this topic at all? What, how can we apply it to a different kind of question? How do topics link with one another? It's things like that that make you a really good mathematician when you're looking at a question. How would you go about sort of doing that? Because I know that some students, um, we love teachers, but some students might not have teachers who go into that much depth just for the sake of the class or whatever. So if you were in that position, how would you go about getting a really 
deep understanding of the topic? I think there's no way to escape doing it. You have to do some wider reading. Yeah. If you if if you're not being if you think you're not being taught sufficiently enough, or you're sitting there and you don't understand why you're doing a certain process or a certain topic, you have to go outside resources. I think a good one is ChatGPT because yeah. overall ChatGPT is awful at math, like absolutely <laughs> terrible. They, it can barely do multiple multiplication, like. But it's really good at explaining uh, certain processes. So if you just put into ChatGPT, oh, I'm struggling with this topic. Can you tell me what is it about? Yeah. Why we do it? It's really good at giving you like a step-by-step -step analysis of why things are done, uh, what the topic is. Um, apart from that, there's loads of videos on YouTube, yeah. loads of them about every topic. Because maths is a pretty, like not, it's not niche. Yeah. Loads of people are into maths. It's very universal. It's very universal, exactly. Because it's like its own language. Yes. It, people from all different backgrounds. It's like you're coming together with maths. Isn't that, isn't that beautiful? Uh, and with like getting into deeper knowledge, there's channels like Three Blue One Brown. Yeah. Love them. Uh, and Oxford specifically, you've got Tom Rocks Maths, yes. who is Amazing. Oxford tutor here. So is it worth going ahead? So for example, if you've just started year 12 and maybe you haven't covered differentiation and integration yet, is it worth you covering it by yourself so you can get a little bit ahead, so you can prepare for the MAT earlier? Or do you think it's fine to just keep in sort of pace with your class? I think you should definitely start thinking about going ahead, especially if, if you think you're going to apply to Oxford for maths, then you're probably going to find the maths A-level a bit boring, <laughs> especially if you're doing further maths alongside it. Because the thing with further maths is you do a lot of the maths content in further maths. Yeah. And so I think it's good to go ahead that way you have more time to revise an entire paper, yeah. which is arguably much more useful than just doing the little bit. If you're thinking of applying for maths, you're probably interested in maths. So reading ahead is probably gonna be something that you should enjoy doing yeah. and doing questions on those. And as well as like strengthening your position when you're doing the paper. So moving on now to math challenges. I know you have a very extensive history with math challenges, probably a testament to the 100% of the math. Um, so when did you start really taking math challenges seriously? And specifically with math challenges, how do you get good at them? So from my own personal experience, um, I was quite shit at them. I mean, I was okay. Like I got gold sometimes. I got silver. I think the, in my year 13, I got silver. Oh, I mean, come on, come on. It is shit like comparatively for going for Oxbridge. So how do you get good at them? Because I never really, I just sort of winged it because I didn't think it was that deep. Um, but obviously you take them quite seriously. So first run me through your history. And then secondly, how did you go about preparing? Especially if you perhaps don't have a teacher who's that interested in it. So, I mean, uh, the first time I did a math challenge was year seven. I, the first time I did it, I got a silver. Like I really enjoyed it, but I didn't really know what was going on. Uh, and I remember this one boy getting a gold and that 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 started everything <laughs> that the next six years of my life was set after that point and so from then on from year eight through year 13 so I got gold on every every single one and I also qualified for the Olympiad on every single one from, uh, year, eight. from year eight onwards so the year eight I did the junior mathematical Olympiad year nine I was meant to do the Kaylee Olympiad it got cancelled yep. can't really remember why 10 Hamilton 11 McLaurin and then 12 and 13, I did BMO1, and year 13, I also did BMO2. To put this into context, these are like the best 100, like BMO2, how many people do that? Uh, about 100. They're top 100 mathematicians in the UK. So obviously, once again, there's a degree of like natural intelligence, but also locking in seriously. So yeah, how did you lock in seriously for this? Practice. There, I, there are so, so many papers, like even more than MAT and like A-level resources. There are so many maths challenge questions. But also, I've I ordered a few books on it okay. because maths challenge is a, like a completely different way of thinking about maths uh, compared to A-level. So you could be really good at A-level maths like you were, but then you may not have had like the mathematical thinking behind doing doing a maths, <laughs> doing, doing a maths challenge uh, because it's completely different. I, so I ordered some books on it. There are like a few set topics that come up a lot in maths challenge, specifically Olympiads. You have things like geometry and combinatorics, yeah. things you don't cover at A level. But yeah, I, it's just pra a, a lot of maths is just practicing because there, there's not a lot you can just, you can't just read maths and understand it. Like uh, for maths challenges, it's good to get a bit of strategy because it's multiple choice. Yeah. You need to be good at deciding, like having educated guesses or yeah. being good at process of elimination or good at just substituting the answers in, see which one works. Yeah. Uh, obviously that doesn't apply for Olympiads. You should actually know what you're doing at that point. Um, but yeah, the, it's good It's good to practice as much as you can, spot any themes 
because some questions come up a lot, get your circle theorems down. Yeah. Amazing. I think the important thing to note here is going into this conversation when I first like found out about Joe, I didn't realize, like I saw BMO2, which is just ridiculous. And did you get a distinction in that? Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So that's like, I don't even want to think about. Not to say that you need to do any of this stuff oh, to get it. By the way, you don't need to. He's just a very rare case study, which is why we're talking about it so much. But the thing that I wanted to stress is he started on a silver. I actually started in a better position because I got a gold in year six somehow, which means that I kind of fell off. But the general theme that I'm getting at is if you genuinely are just consistent with the amount of hard work you put in, then you can do very well. I don't know what degree of natural intelligence there is. I think most people who try for math challenges actually enjoy math, so it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, just consistent practice. If you struggled with a question and sort of who would you go to if you struggled with a senior math challenge question? I would, okay, so first of all, uh, there's some questions I would go like to my teachers and say, well, how, how would you approach this? I remember once in like year 10, uh, the question 25 was some weird circle thing with disc with weird shapes and finding areas and whatever. I went straight to my teacher and he was like, yeah, no, we, we do this. And then it, it sort of didn't seem something you do. Like it mixed it, it mixed a lot of different maths together. It means next time you see a question like that, you'll know what to do. Yeah. You go to your teacher, go to someone who's good enough at maths to know what the answer is. Uh, do other questions like it, and then at some point you will just learn when, if you look at a question, you go, well, that looks like a question I've done before. You'll know what to do, and it will seem easy when at one point you had no idea what first step to take. Doing it over and over and over again, it'll get lodged in your brain whether you like it or not. This is probably a future note because ChatGPT is a bit shit at the moment, but in the future, if ChatGPT does get a lot better in maths, which I suspect it will, if you don't have a teacher that you can go to, I presume that it'll be able to like explain very difficult math stuff. As, as bad at uh, maths as, as it is, it can help you improve your maths because if you put in a question, uh, you you know from the get-go it's going to get it wrong. But if you can look through its proof and analyze what's wrong, then it helps you more deeply understand what's going on. Because a lot, even at uni, sometimes I'll look at a question and I'll go, well, what does ChatGPT think about this? Yeah. I'll read it and I'll go, it's, it's so wrong. Yeah. But it helps me obviously cement in my mind what the topic is and like what I'm meant to know about it. Because ChatGPT is so bad that it, it's impossible not to improve from it. Are there any other resources aside from like the MAT itself, which you find useful for preparing for the MAT? Uh, I mean, to be honest, other, other admissions tests for maths, like the TMUA, like they follow a similar structure. They obviously come off the same curriculum. And even I think now, now that MAT has changed to be loads of multiple, multiple choice questions, it's more useful than ever to use the TMUA. And it's just, it's good to build not only your maths knowledge, but also strategies for when you're like completing an exam like the MAT, because it's a game that you just have to play. Knowing, knowing the maths behind it sometimes isn't enough. You need to like find the quickest route to getting an answer down. Did you use much step? I did I did a lot of step practice. I don't think it's as useful for the MAT because it's a different layout. Mm. Step, uh, step questions are very interesting in the way that they're all long answer and there's nothing quite like step. Doing step is very useful. It builds a mathematical brain, yeah. but in terms of doing like really well on the MAT and how it's structured, MAT and Team UA, and um, like Tom Rock's maths, he does loads of videos on things like that. He's put the MAT through ChatGPT. It, it, it didn't go well for it. It wouldn't get into Oxford. Like yeah, loads of videos, uh, loads of resources to practice on. So I guess the final question to ask is, were there any specific strategies which you learnt and then employed within the MAT? Like any super specific stuff that would be useful for the viewers to know about? Yeah, um, so, cause I did, I did every MAT paper as practice and it was, quite easy to spot some themes in terms of the multiple choice questions for MAT as in the maths challenge as in the TMUA there are strategies to defeating multiple choice questions uh, process of elimination is a really good one like seeing answers that obviously aren't true uh, for some questions you can just plug answers in whether you can do the maths or not it's probably just quicker to plug an answer in get it out some questions there's there's no choice you have to just go through it and see what comes out but there are definitely strategies to defeating multiple choice questions quickly getting them out of the way and moving on to the long answer questions which should take more time with the logic questions in particular do you have any sort of process like the the knave of hearts and all of this stuff that comes up for that sort of question so i mean the questions like that because they're not on a level sy syllabus like they're not on the a level syllabus they have to give you a lot of information prior so for those questions i think it's really important to read through the question and see exactly what they're asking. But sometimes you have questions where it's like, oh, this one's lying and this yeah. one, just cases, cases. You might you might want to like prove, try and find a like complete proof that works every time, but it's just much easier to go through the limited number of cases. Yeah. So like, oh, if he's telling the truth, then what does this mean for this person or whatever? Which is what sometimes people forget when doing MET and STEP is that question is one question as a whole. All the parts are related, but some people would consider part D completely different to part A and they would just forget everything they've proved like up until that point, which is pointless. Because when you get to part D, 
you could have just like done half the work in part A, but if you if you ignore what you've done, you're just basically writing an entire new question. It's going to take a lot more time. Very inefficient, suboptimal, as a mathematician yeah. would say. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess just to reiterate before we end the video, so the, I think the most important thing from what I can tell is just the math challenges. Those are very very important, as well as the MAT itself. Um, any final remarks before we end off the video? So I think it's important just to know math that practice makes perfect. Keep going for those math challenge papers. Keep developing your enjoyment of maths, getting an interest into it before you even go into the MAT, because you shouldn't really be applying if you're not interested in maths anyway. Uh, but practice makes perfect is the key point, yeah. Also, as well as this, Joe offers some tuition services, so would you like to talk about that? Uh, yeah, so I'm doing tutoring for things like the MAT, things like STEP, TMUA. What score did you get in STEP? Uh, so I got an S, I got 109 out of 120, which... Ridiculous. Pretty high. Uh, <laughs> so I, yeah, so I run tuition for things like that, as well as uh, just A-level maths, A-level further maths, particularly further mechanics, further pure one, because those are the modules I took. Perfect, yeah, and obviously those admissions tests are really, really important. So if you are interested in tuition, which obviously I would strongly recommend with Joe, if you are struggling at all, um, there'll be links in the description so you can contact him. He's on LinkedIn. What's the best way of contacting you, would you say? I think LinkedIn is probably the best way. Just yeah. Joe Whitehouse, LinkedIn. There we go. You can check his LinkedIn and if you don't have LinkedIn, we'll also provide his email. But yeah, very, very good services. So thank you very much. Hopefully this video has been useful on getting 100% in the MAT. Maybe you can replicate that too and stand amongst the goats. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Joe.